Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. I appreciate you being here and I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today I want to share with you some of the biggest mistakes that new and believe it or not even experienced fish keepers make so that you can avoid them. Even better, I've brought in a few friends to share their thoughts and experiences with you. So don't go anywhere, you might just see your favorite YouTuber on this episode of Fever and Friends. Hey there FishTube! So uh, this is a really cool series that we're doing here. You're going to see a lot of very experienced, uh, very knowledgeable fish keepers um, who have been keeping fish for quite some time. And then me. <laughs> I'm very new to the hobby. I've only been keeping fish for a couple of years. But my buddy James from Fish Room Fever uh, asked me maybe, he, he asked me to talk about um, biggest mistakes that uh, new fish keepers like myself make when they first start out. You know, I'm going to be honest. I, 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 luckily, I haven't made too many mistakes. That is because of my first piece of advice. Join a group, even before you get your first fish tank. I know that sounds weird. Join a group, join your local fish club, join the fish fam, watch fish videos, join in the live streams, talk to people, figure things out, figure out what kind of fish work well in your water, figure out the nitrogen cycle. The biggest mistake I think we, we make is we're not patient. We grow too fast as new fish keepers. So we see that tank, we see those fish, we gotta have it. We go out and get it and we don't really learn about those fish we don't learn what fish work well in our water parameters so we're just not patient we see all these amazing fish tanks that are out there and we want that too that takes time it takes time to get to that point that's probably the biggest mistake that we make as new fish keepers is we're not patient i know the number one mistake i made uh in the early days of fish keeping and really what spawned a lot of research into what you're supposed to do when you keep a fish properly was uh, over cleaning the media, uh, being a little bit too obsessive with a, a clean filter. Uh, the fact is filters like we use for air and stuff in our home aren't the same as the filters that we're using for our aquariums. Uh, some of that gook has to be there, indeed needs to be there to feed the bacteria that really, that really filter the water. Some of my hugest mistakes, I think, in the past were cleaning it too soon or, or keeping it too free of, of gook and stuff. Uh, I, did, I did rinse my media and chlorine like at least once. Uh, and this was very early on, okay? <laughs> but yeah, uh, keeping your filter too clean is probably the, the biggest mistake a, a beginner makes. Of course, the root of that is not understanding the nitrogen cycle, and I think every beginner makes that mistake. The question is, what are some mistakes that new fish keepers make? And I know for me personally, it was being impatient. I wanted to bring home the tank and all the fish and everything right then and set it up. And I did not know anything about the nitrogen cycle. So if you're new to this hobby, make sure you take some time out, get to know the nitrogen cycle forwards and backwards and just slow down have patience it really does help in the long run i know it's exciting but slow down do things by a few steps and you will help you and your aquarium for the future i'm lrb aquatics aquarium hoarder thanks for joining us and thanks for having me here on the channel i appreciate that and when it comes to the biggest mistakes that fish keepers make i would say that it's knowing your water and understanding your water. I know it sounds complicated, I know it can sound a little intimidating, but really it's not that hard. If you learn about TDS, GH, and KH, that's like your most important, is learning if you got soft water or hard water. I love to use a TDS meter, they're only like 10, 15 dollars, pretty cheap. You dip them into the tank, matter of fact, got one right here, they look like that, you turn them on, plug them in, it gives you a number. And if this reads around above 200, then you got harder water. If it reads under 200, then you got softer water. And higher up to the scale, harder it is. Lower to the scale of zero, softer it is. 200 is neutral. 200 is pretty much good for about every fish. I don't know of any fish that would have a problem with neutral water. So, saying this, big, big thing is knowing your water and understanding how hard your water is or soft because that'll help you keep anything because you'll know 
from your research of the fish that you're keeping what kind of water it'll like and be able to give them said water because really we're just keeping the water the fish keep themselves we try to keep them comfortable keep their immunities happy and uh, keep them in good water to where they can thrive like that and keep that immunity up so hopefully this helps some of you guys out there and uh, thanks for watching the biggest mistake that new fish keepers make is not being able to control their impulses. You see things, they're attractive to you or they're beautiful to you and you want that in your aquarium and your impulse takes over to just buy that thing instead of taking the time to research whatever that thing is, whether it's a decoration or a new fish or a plant or whatever it is, before even knowing whether or not you can accommodate that animal or that thing you buy it anyway. Why? Because we just see it and we have to have it. And we're used to everything being instant gratification these days. We don't want to mess around doing research and all of that. So we just buy it and we figure it out later. Unfortunately, in this hobby, a lot of times what you're going to figure out is that you made a huge mistake. So yes, I'm sure multiple people in this video have already said, do your research. It's very, very true. But also part of that is controlling your impulses don't immediately buy whatever it is that you see. The other angle to that too is a lot of people have difficult time controlling their impulses when it comes to solving problems. The water's dirty, I need to buy this. The water's cloudy, I need to get a bigger filter. You don't always have to spend money to solve problems. Slow down, watch some videos, read some articles, do some research, learn what it is that's going on, and you might be able to solve that problem for free. Just maybe a little bit of elbow grease. So yes, control yourself, and you're gonna thank me for that because you're gonna save a lot of money and a lot of heartache, and potentially you're gonna save some, some fish from being tortured by you because you didn't know what you were doing when you bought them. So I think one of the biggest and least talked about mistakes is not realizing that we all make mistakes. We've all had fish die. We've all done that one dumb thing that we really wish we could take back. Most of the advice that you're hearing in this video comes from personal experiences, not just the most common questions that we get asked. Mistakes are gonna be made. The key things are minimizing how big they are and how often they happen. Using those mistakes as a learning experience and continuing to push forward on your journey fish keeping. We lose way too many new hobbyists because they make a mistake and they just give up. Don't let that be you. We all want you to enjoy this hobby just as much as we do. Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. What mistakes do new fish keepers sometimes make? Well, this is something we've talked a lot about on our channel. And I think the biggest mistake, the biggest single mistake is not having patience. And that can take a lot of forms. That patience may be give yourself time to figure out what fish keeping is all about, understanding what it means to have a fully cycled tank, understand what it means to quarantine fish. And I know sometimes it can be difficult to buy a new fish and you want to put it in your display tank because, well, it's going to look awesome. That's why you bought it. And the thought of having to set this fish aside in a quarantine tank for four weeks to make sure that it is truly healthy before it goes into that main tank, well, that's no fun. But having the patience to do that, having the patience to let your tank fully cycle so that it is ready for fish, those are things when you have those down, fish keeping becomes a lot easier. The biggest mistake new fish keepers make, well, I can speak of one huge mistake that I have experience with in a lot of different hobbies, and that is trying to do too much too fast. See, I'm the kind of person who learns by doing, and I'm the kind of person who doesn't just dabble in a hobby. I dive in head first. So with the aquarium hobby, that can go many directions at once. Uh, the most common one being that multi-tank syndrome, um, chasing breeding projects, chasing the perfect parameters for that new rare and expensive fish, um, injecting CO2 for those more delicate plants, trying to replicate that award-winning aquascape you saw on a YouTube video somewhere. But if you're a new aquarist, uh, heading off in so many directions is a quick way to fail hard. And you'll burn out, uh, you'll get discouraged. I really think you'll actually learn 
more of the right things about fish keeping if you spend more time with fewer tanks. Hey guys, Lefty 3213A here. And my answer to this question of the biggest mistake that fish keepers make might sound a little different than other people. Now, we all know research is good in this hobby, and there's nothing wrong with research. You should do definitely do your research. But when new fish keepers come into the hobby and they want to do things right, they go online, they hit forums, they hit Facebook groups, they hit all these different things online, and the internet has told them this fish needs to be kept at this specific pH and this specific temperature. It can't go with this fish. It can't go with that fish. It can only go with these certain fish. A lot of the time the fish will adapt to almost any situation. Now what I mean by that is if a new time fish keeper comes in and they want to get a specific say tetra and it says the fish needs to be kept at a pH of 6.8 at a temperature of 76. So they get their tank set up, they go home, the tap water comes out and it comes out at like 6.3. The new time fish keeper is going to see, okay, it needs to get up to this number, and they're going to want to start putting pH plus in their tank or something else to buffer that pH up. They're going to see, okay, my water's only at 74. I got to turn the thermometer, turn the heater up to 76. I got to put this kind of substrate in here. I can only get these fish to go with it. Again, while research is good, fish are extremely adaptable. So if you get a fish that has to be at 6.7 and your pH comes out at, you know, 6.3, 6.5 from the tap, leave it alone. The fish will be fine. The quality of your water, the cleanliness of your water matters more. So I think the biggest mistake a new time fish keeper can make is chasing those tank parameters, which in the long run can stress the fish out more than just letting it go in your tank. And as long as you're within a close enough range, the fish will be fine. My biggest mistake as far as fish keeping goes would definitely be impulse shopping. I have been known to come home with things that I don't need. It's not just fish. But anyways, back to fish keeping. My very first fish was a silver arowana. We went to the fish store. It's kind of how John got me in the hobby is by me picking out my very first fish. And I decided it had to be a silver arowana. It couldn't be a beta or a tetra or anything like that had to be a silver arowana. And I went behind his back while he was doing something else in the fish store and I bought it. It was about this big. And uh, we went home with that fish. He told me the whole time it was a mistake. It wasn't going to go at all well in his tank with the one he already had. And boy, was he right because that night we were at PetSmart and I was buying an emergency 55 gallon tank to put that fish in just so it didn't get killed by his silver arowana. So impulse shopping, you just, you don't want to do it. It's not, it's not the hobby. It's not. As you probably noticed, not being patient plays a huge part in a ton of mistakes when it comes to fish keeping. And while you're being patient, you might as well do your research. Find quality information resources and use them. Whether that's videos, live streams with interactive chats, online articles, or books. Spending a little bit of time learning now will save you a lot of time fixing things later. I hope that you enjoyed this video and consider sharing it with someone you know. I want to say huge thanks to all my friends who contributed to this and upcoming videos for the Fever and Friends series. If you've made it this far and you got some sort of value from this video, consider subscribing. It's free. You can always change your mind. I'm going to put two videos up on the screen that I think you might enjoy. Until next time, keep your fish healthy, keep yourselves healthy. Don't be afraid to catch yourself a little fish room fever. Take care, everybody.